and just go around and around and around and around and around we go. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world. And yes, it's been a hot minute since I sat down and chatted with you. Uh, these past few weeks have kind of been a blur, if you will. I did post on Instagram that I did indeed come down with another round of the stomach flu or stomach virus. It may have well been food poisoning, who knows? Uh, I did go to urgent care, I told them my symptoms, and basically they said I had to ride it out. So anyway, uh, yeah, it, that, that was not fun, but I, I will say it wasn't as bad as the stomach bug that I caught a month ago. That, that was bad. This one lingered, this one hung around, and it was just equally not as fun. But uh, thankfully, I had enough energy in me to work on some projects that I've been meaning to finish. I mean, you might notice an elephant in the room, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but if you're new here, hello, welcome to my little corner of the interwebs where I sit down or try to sit down with you every week and share what I've been working on, primarily knitting. Uh, I do a lot of other crafts such as crochet, quilting, sewing. We dive down many a different rabbit hole here on this channel. So if that is your gem, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. Um, but yeah, it's been two weeks, like I said, and I, I've got a lot to catch you up on. So gather around, grab a cup of something. I've got um, one of these cups filled with some caffeine-free Diet Coke, uh, but whatever is your poison, pick it and let's get into things. Before we get into finished objects and what I've been working on, let's talk about what Marga the Madigan is wearing this week. And she is wearing my Christmas Eve cast on project, and that is the No Frills Pullover by Petite Knit. And the yarn is my own hand dyed yarn, Woolen Vine Yarns, using two different bases held together. And the first base is my Nouveau base, which is a single ply superwash merino fingering weight, and it's held together with Ghost Lace, which is a lace weight mohair silk blend. In the colorway, Gashly Crumb, which is a colorway inspired by Edward Gorey, one of my favorite illustrators. She has been getting quite a lot of wear this year, and it is super cozy. It's just, it has such a luxurious feel to it. I can't describe it other than buttered kittens. It's just so warm and cozy and silky and... I love wearing that thing. As for what I'm wearing, this is my latest FO, and it's been so long, it feels like it's been so long since I finished a project, since I finished anything, to be honest. Not finishing anything in, for what feels like months, has been a little overwhelming and a little frustrating uh, for me personally when it comes to creativity, because whenever I finish a project, it just gives me a boost, if you will. I'm sure I'm not alone, but it gives me a, a confidence boost, it gives me motivation to tackle the next thing, and lately I've just been, I feel like I've just been treading water. I hate that stagnant feeling, if you will. And um, this this sweater right here, uh, I should mention, is the Easy V Pullover by Caitlin Hunter. And I cast this on, I believe, six or seven months ago, which feels like... So I feel like I just cast this on yesterday, but no, I, I checked my Ravelry project page and I believe I did indeed cast this on about seven months ago and I got distracted. I got distracted by all the other new and shiny things, all like crochet, quilting, and whatever, whatever caught my attention. And when I got sick last week, I did take a break from crochet and I saw this sweater from the corner of my peripheral vision sitting in my UFO bin. I have a nice little storage bin next to my desk over there. Um, and I just saw it languishing, just hanging out. And I'm like, you know what? I really, I'm so close to finishing this sweater. Let's do it, Kristen, pull it out, let's work on it. And sure enough, that day I finished a sleeve and then the following week I finished the second sleeve. And here we are, we have a finished sweater. And I'm so happy, so excited and yeah. Um, what a great pattern, guys. I mean, this, as the name suggests, it's a piece of cake. It's super easy. If you're someone who's new to color work or have been thinking about trying color work, this is, I highly recommend this pattern. This is a really easy gateway drug into the land of color work or knitting color work. The main color that I use, this dusty rose, I want to say, or shall we say mauve, my favorite color in the whole wide world, is Knitting for Olive in their worsted weight. And I'm blinking on the exact colorway name, but I'll pop it in the down bar below in the description box. Um, but it's this really lovely worsted weight yarn, Knitting for Olive. It feels very, you know, sturdy workhorse. It's going to 
it's going to take a lot of wear and tear. I don't foresee this pilling. Um, and the color work yarn that I used is by Spin Cycle Yarns in their, is it Dream State? It's their, it's their plumpiest yarn, but it uses three different colorways. The first one up here and this dark, um, black and white, brown, gray is called Hold, Stay Ready, Stay Ready. And, uh, let me see this yellow, bright yellow color over here is called Salty Dog. And then this teal over here is called Deep Bump. I'm memorizing the names, guys. This whole color palette is very much out of my comfort zone, but seeing these colors together, I, I could not resist. I was like, you know what? Let's have fun with color for once. And uh, this, it, it just makes me so happy. Um, and the one thing I will say, if you look at the sleeves here, uh, the nature of Spin Cycle yarns is that it creates a marled gradient effect. And you can see that there's a shift in color in the sleeves over here, but at the end of the day, it's such a fun, scrap it, it's only I, I would say you could totally use you know yarn scraps for this sweater as well um but it's just a very casual scrappy type of <laughs> pattern in my opinion and i i love it i love how random it is and fun and yeah i mean this this sweater is gonna get so much wear for me i mean i know not everyone is into like gaping necklines, wide gaping necklines that kind of give you like a flash dance effect, but I am here for it. I love this look. I love this style. And this is just going to be one of those sweaters that I chuck on while I'm at home lounging around or, you know, Dennis and I go out for date night during the week or something. It's just very, very cozy, very casual. Um, I just want to curl up on a sofa with, with a good book or a knit and chill. I'll see you guys. So I'm trying to think what else I want to say about it other than there was no reason for me not to have finished this earlier. Um, it, had I just focused on finishing this particular sweater, I easily could have had it done in under a month, given my, my schedule. Um, but I'm so glad that I came back to it and finished it, and we have a finished object, guys. I know Caitlin Hunter's patterns aren't uh, everyone's cup of tea, especially when it comes to sizing and fit, but for me personally, because I love oversized sweaters, and that's primarily what I knit, um, I, I mean, she's, she's an easy go-to for me. Um, so anyway, we're very, very happy with the way this turned out. Um, but in the meantime, while I was still letting this, this pattern languish and I was going down my crochet rabbit hole, I did have a sneaky cast on. I did do, I did cast on something new because as I mentioned, crochet, I do have to focus on what my hands are doing. And because I'm not into knitting socks at the moment, I needed something autopilot to knit. Um, I mean, at this point I was already doing the color work on this sweater. The rest of it is very autopilot knitting. You're just knitting stockinette in the round. But because I didn't have anything on the go where I could just zone out <laughs> and forget what my hands were doing, I was naughty and cheekily casted on a new, cheekily, is that is that a word? Cheeky, that's what I was going for, but creating a new word here. I cheekily casted on something new and that is a, an Okapi pullover by Judith O'Brien. And this is a pattern that I talked about after I returned back from Rhinebeck of last year. Um, I picked up some yarn from the Loop Fiber Studio booth. Uh, if you're not familiar with Loop Fiber Studio, what are you doing with your life? Uh, Steph Gorin, she's a genius when it comes to fibers, blending fibers. She has these magnificent fiber bumps that are just so, gorgeous and fun. Um, I've spun several of them in the past, but she, several years ago, I think around five years ago, she introduced a yarn line and yeah, I, it's called Yin Yang, Harmonizing the Yarn Universe. Um, and here is one of the skeins that I picked up. The concept with this yarn is that each colorway has a flipped or an inverse of itself. So this colorway right here is an inverse of this colorway right here. So you have kind of like this off-white bone color with a black marl and then the other colorway that goes along with it or can go along with it is a black yarn with a off-white bone marl in it. So it's that's why it's called yin yang and I think it's so fun and brilliant and yeah the yarn itself is this one is fingering weight yarn this one is fingering weight. It's 100% extra fine merino. You get 400 yarns and 100 grams per skein in the yang colorway. And then this one is called yin. And yeah, again, it's just so soft. So, oh yeah, love it. Such beautiful, beautiful yarn. Um, so I picked up 
a, a sweater's quantity worth because I saw a sample hanging in her booth of the Okapi and I was like, that I want to knit that it looks so fun and I'll pop a photo of it here and as you can see it has you know it's just a very basic oversized again oversized pullover um with stripy sleeves and I it's very Wednesday Adams it's very gothy if you will and just had my name all over it and I was like yeah just shut up take my money give me enough yarn to make one of those so I picked up a sweater's quantity worth and I cast one on a couple weeks ago and this has been my body sock the project that I pick up when I don't want to focus on what my hands are doing when I just want to zone out watch a movie on Netflix and just go around and around and around and around and around we go the only difference is that I'm making both sleeves match so we're doing matchy matchy sleeves with stripes and then the body is just gonna be this Kind of it almost reminds me of like a marble notebook you know those notebooks that you used when you were in grade school yeah um that's what this color reminds me of uh, it just has a really fun marled effect to it and so again like if you're not into spin cycle if you're not into the gradients but you still love a good marl this yarn is a great option um again i'll link to her shop down below she's she has so many great colors in this with this effect so yeah this pattern uh okapi by judith by judith bryan uh is again just a very simple well i don't i wouldn't say simple basic go-to it's it definitely has some interesting shoulder shaping so again if you're familiar with um, sweater construction there's a type of sweater construction that's called a saddle shoulder so it, it's kind of i would almost similarly similarly sim i always have trouble pronouncing that word but similarly to the easy v where you know you have like this strip just going down the side of your shoulder and that's what you call a saddle shoulder so it's kind of like it's just a strip that sits along your shoulder and everything kind of grows out from it um although this is a unique construction unto itself but same same kind of concept um, that is what's happening or going on with this pattern right here you can't really see it because of the marl but trust me it's there and yeah it just creates a really nice draped shoulder effect if you're new to knitting sweaters I if, if you're an adventurous beginner you know I say go for it, dive right in, but there is a little bit of interesting shaping and construction happening in the, you know, after the cast on with the shoulders and the, the short row shaping in the back. Um, you know, it, it is a little, a little involved, but once you're past, once you're past that and you know, you're on body Island, it's just smooth sailing. I mean, it does have a rolled neckline right here that rolls up on itself. Um, but yeah, it's, I think this is again, going to be another one of those sweaters that I'm just going to chuck on and go. Yeah, that's what I'm all about. So that is my latest cast on, but I, I have been thinking about casting on something new because it feels like it's been a while. The last project I knit with my own hand-dyed yarns was the no frills pullover. So, you know, as, as a businesswoman, as someone running a business, I feel like I need to get on knitting another sample with my hand dyed yarn. So again, hold that thought. Um, I'm still deciding what it is I want to cast on next with it. But in the meantime, you're probably all wondering, Kristen, what's, what's happening with the fruit garden blanket? Uh, the fruit garden blanket, if you do not know, is my current work in progress when it comes to crochet. So this is a labor of love. This is heirloom caliber if you will this project i i cannot believe i've come this far with it i'm so proud of myself and i think you're gonna be proud of me as well but i yeah again I'm, i've just been making so much progress guys it's in blanket form we have a blanket forming it's it's a square and we have all of the center panels crochet they're done they're grafted together and we're gonna have a blanket soon guys again this is the fruit garden blanket a beautiful gorgeous free pattern i still can't believe it's free uh it's a pattern by uh, jane crowfoot or jane jenny crow and yeah it's it's so pretty guys it's so pretty i i, I just i'm so in love with this project clearly because i have not been able to put it down i've been working on it consistently i haven't let it languish with the exception of the week i had the the bad stomach flu that week was the worst I had no energy whatsoever so I lost about a week or two on this project but we're going full steam again we're working on it and I don't know if you can see but I'm working on the outer border of the 
of the center square, if you will. But this border over here is alternating two different colors at the same time. It's all crochet, but you're crocheting with two colors at the same time. And um, the way that sh that Jane Crowfoot shows you in the video tutorial was that you crochet two stitches, drop the yarn, pick up, crochet with the other two, drop the yarn, and it was taking forever. It was, it was going to be the death knell for me, guys. So I employed a technique when, you know, when you're knitting color work, some people who knit continental drape two strands of yarn over two fingers and they pick up the, uh, the yarn that they need when they're knitting color work from their dominant hand. I don't know. Am I making any sense? I'll try an overlay video here or do a separate video tutorial, but that technique has helped me immensely when it came, when it comes to knitting this section right here, because otherwise I think I would have torn my hair out. Um, <laughs> it would have been a very, very slow process, but you know, draping the yarn, like tensioning two strands of yarn in this hand and draping it over in such a way where it allows me to use the crochet hook and pick up the color that I need for that part of this row or this section has been a boon, if you will. And yeah, it just helps speed up the process a little bit more so I can get onto the outer mega border that has to happen. So anyway, um, guys, yeah. I mean, let me see if I can point out, like this square right here, this is the Clementine square, and this is by far my favorite square out of all the flowers. I mean, it looks a lot more simple compared to the other ones, but I just love the, um, top stitching that she has you do over here it just looks really woven. Um, I think this is the hollyhock. This was the last square that she has you do for this center section. And then there's the purple aster. And then the most squares that I had to do for this section are the forget me knots over here. I had to make eight of these little guys right here. So yeah, I'm trying to think what else I want to say. Yeah, other than this is such a lovely well-written pattern, and I love the fact that she has video tutorials to go along with it. Again, like, it, it, I am relatively still green when it comes to crochet, and throughout this entire project, I felt like my hand has been held throughout, and there was no point in time where I was like, what the heck is she talking about? The, again, the pattern is just so incredibly well-written. Video tutorials, um, yeah, Jane Crofa is a genius. I, I don't know how she does it. I don't know how she comes up with these ideas, but I, I'm a huge fan. And again, I have to thank my friend Ashley for pointing me in her direction because I'm obsessed. I'm so obsessed. Um, and the yarn that I'm using for this project, in case you're wondering, if you're, if you're new here, um, is by Stylecraft. It's uh, a kit that I purchased from woolwarehouse.co.uk. They're based in the UK. I'm here in the US. So shipping wasn't awful, but it wasn't the cheapest. So it definitely, definitely an investment, but so worth it in my opinion. Um, I purchased a kit from there and it's Stylecraft Naturals Bamboo Plus Cotton uh, DK weight yarn. But again, this is more like fingering weight yarn. It's, in my opinion, DK weight is just a little thicker, um, but this definitely, in my opinion, just has fingering weight qualities to it. But you know what? It's the yarn that the pattern calls for. I'm not questioning it. I'm just going with the flow and it's crocheting up absolutely beautifully. I do have a little bin over here that are holding my uh, acanthus flowers and these little guys, I have eight of them. <laughs> yeah, these are probably the most involved element of the entire blanket. I don't know how you can see this, but um, these are going to be the giant rectangles that make up the border, the outer border of the blanket itself. And again, like I really appreciate the way she lays out this pattern because, um, because these are so involved, she breaks this rectangle motif down into tiny bite-sized chunks. So she sprinkles in the steps for this motif throughout each clue of the pattern, which by the way, this was originally a crochet along. So it was broken down into, the whole pattern was broken down into clues. And for each clue, she added the next step for this motif. So I really appreciate that. It makes it very, very manageable. And if you are new to crochet and you feel like tackling something massive and epic like this, I mean, 
fret not, your hand will be held the entire time. I say, I say go for it. And I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, there's, there have been some other peripheral crafts going on. I have started a new quilt, uh, which I'm not ready to talk about yet, but I will say if you are a member of this YouTube channel, every Monday I share a very casual vlog sharing what I get up to over the weekend life-wise, craft-wise, you know, and share share these little crafts that I do on the side that I don't talk about in the main channel. But if that's something you're interested in and want to support this channel in any way, the work that I do here, um, you can do that by becoming a member. Uh, just click the join button below this video or on the main channel page. And for the price of a fancy schmancy cup of coffee every month, depending which tier you pick, uh, you can unlock some bonus features. And I would be so grateful. Uh, and if you are a member, thank you, thank you so much. It means the world. So anyway, oh goodness, uh, I should probably end things there. I've got a lot of work to do today. It's already noon. I definitely got a late start to recording today, but thank you so much as always for hanging out with me. If you're new here, welcome. If you haven't already, feel free to like and subscribe down below. I'm putting out videos for your viewing pleasure on a regular basis. And until the next video, have an amazing weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye.